Great platformers need a responsive, animated jump. In search of this, game developers have discovered many tricks and techniques, each which improves how your character feels to control. One of the best additions to your jump is to increase your character's full speed. Playing around with gravity isn't exactly realistic, but it's a great way to give personality to your player. Additionally, it prevents your jump feeling floaty. Tips and tricks like these are used by every great platformer. And so today, let's explore the techniques you can use to design an incredible jump Okay, so when the player reaches the peak of their jump, we're going to increase gravity. This pairs nicely with variable jump height, a method allowing us to control how high the player jumps based on how long we hold down the jump button. There's two different ways games do this. First, a game such as Super Meat Boy reduces upwards momentum by 50% the second the player releases the jump button. This feels super precise and will likely work perfectly for your game, but maybe you want something a tad more gentle. In this case, try raising the player's gravity when they release the jump button. This method leads to a smooth transition back to falling, though could lead to your player falling a bit too fast. This can happen normally as well, with gravity accelerating the player downwards as they fall. So, many games such as Hollow Knight limit the character's max fall speed, known as clamping. This helps us incorporate falling into our level design without the player accelerating out of control. Before we continue, another feature I just love from Hollow Knight's movement are these snappy wall jumps. I think they really work great in the game, tying neatly into the combat, exploration and platforming. So later I'd love to come back and take a closer look at those. Let's move on to the next phase of our jump. This section is crucial. It's the highest point of our jump arc, and if not done right, can lead to frustrating controls. Here, we can decide how lengthy a jump we want and how much airtime we should give the player. These choices can have a huge impact on your game's level design. So as always, it's important to find the right balance for your game. We can see how a combat-oriented platformer, Hollow Knight, has a ton of jump air time, allowing the player to easily line up attacks. Celeste, on the other hand, has quite a short, bouncy jump, well suited to its methodical level and energetic dash. One interesting trick Celeste also uses is lowering the player's gravity at the peak of their jump. How can we replicate this? If we graph out a jump arc, we can see that the player's speed is slowest around its apex. Using this knowledge, what I do is halve the character's gravity while they're within this speed, allowing us to replicate this great feature. This trick is very subtle, but we can see how this bonus airtime really makes our jump for that little bit more bouncy. A similar small detail which I like to add is a boost to the player's acceleration at this peak as well. Again, it's very subtle, but only helps to make our jump for that little bit more forgiving. On a different note, we can also improve how our character feels through the visuals. Clear animations can help communicate crucial information to the player, such as what abilities they can use or whether they've been hit. However, when discussing motion, squash and stretch are arguably the most important. Oh, and don't forget impact particles. Great animations paired with thoughtfully designed movement can turn what behind the scenes is a relatively simple player controller to something really wonderful. Now that we have a good idea for what makes an awesome jump, let's briefly talk about a couple options you have when applying our jump force. The main thing here is that we can either entirely override our current velocity or decide to also factor in the player's momentum. The first is probably what you're already using and is all you really need. But if you really want to double down on the physics based approach whilst keeping a jump that feels responsive, here's what I like to do. I'm also doing some extra calculations in the final step. These aren't necessary, but I'll leave some extra information about them in the description. Okay, before we move on, every platformer should include coyote time. This allows the player to jump for a short duration after falling off a platform. This trick may seem weird at first, but ultimately it only makes the game feel fairer and allows us to do what the player intended, even if they were a bit late pressing jump. Celeste uses many of these techniques to reduce the importance of precise inputs. Instead, this places the game's difficulty on mastering your movement as a whole and overcoming each handcrafted screen. Similarly, adding a short grace period after pressing jump can help avoid controls feeling unresponsive. So we've taken a look at how we can improve the responsiveness of our jump with coyote time, variable jump height, and by limiting our max fall speed as well as secondly, making our character feel more lively and animated with squash and stretch, bonus jump hang time and a fast bouncy jump arc. Now it's time we tackle wall jumps. These abide by many of the same fundamentals as our standard jump, yet the added horizontal force can make them much harder to apply in practice. One of the first issues you may encounter is with the player's run. 
When we wall jump, we need to accelerate the player along the Y and now also the X axis. However, this horizontal force will often be immediately cancelled out by your movement. One of the most common ways to fix this is to prevent player movement entirely for a short duration after wall jumping. This is okay and I even used it in my own game, but it's a bit clunky and often doesn't feel great. A more elegant solution is to reduce, but crucially not remove, our run force. This way we still keep some control during our wall jump, but we'll also transition smoothly back to our normal run. Interestingly, this plays a second role, allowing us to decide how easy it will be for the player to return back to the wall after launching off. Let's quickly look at how this works before looking at some more examples. Here I'm using lerping. This stands for linear interpolation. I like to think of this as fading between two numbers. Applying this technique to our run will be smoothing towards our target speed by a time parameter, overall dampening our run. Oh, and I'll talk more about what all of this means at the end. One quick thing you can add on top of wall jumps is a slide. Here's how I do it. Once again, I'll go into greater detail about this technique later on. It's the same one I'm using for the player's run. Okay, let's discuss how you can go about designing your wall jump. Want Hollow Knight snappy wall jumps? Then giving back control quickly after leaving the wall is ideal, done with a short jump time and high lert value. This gives us a lot of control during our wall jump, allowing the player to easily return to the wall and climb up them quickly. In contrast, Celeste's wall jump feels totally different. It takes greater control away from the player, interestingly shifting the focus away from climbing walls towards the leaping off of them, in the game often combined with a dash. This is one of many ways Celeste neatly ties in its mountaineering theme into the character's movement, also achieved via its stamina system. Ultimately, these different abilities allow many of Celeste's challenges to be solved in a multitude of ways, leading to levels that can challenge the player in problem solving just as much as platforming ability. If we're talking about building on your character's skill set, we need to mention double jumps. These have become quintessential to the platformer genre. To get double jumps working, we can allow the player one jump mid-air if they're not grounded. Then, when they become grounded once again, we can reset this variable. I've always loved Hollow Knight's use of double jumps. Here, the mid-air jump can be super useful during boss fights and pairs particularly well with the game's pogo ability, similar to that found in Shuffle Knight. In this game, if you attack downwards onto a spike or an enemy, the player will be launched high into the air. This can be combined with your double jump to remain airborne indefinitely, chaining together pogos, double jumps and dashes. Somehow the devs have managed to combine all of the player's core abilities, raising the game's skill ceiling and leading to incredible feats like this. Creating synergy between abilities is a great way to build on your movement without increasing its complexity. Celeste is another fantastic example of this with its super dashes. Similar to Hollow Knight, these raise the game's skill ceiling. So we've talked about how to improve the fool of your jump, its hang time and the importance of visuals. So the player has an animated bouncy jump arc. With these tricks your jump will be feeling great, but there's still a lot more to a platformer. If you want to learn about platformer acceleration and how to design a fantastic run, check out my last video.